We've been students of the digestive system and it's uh, way valuable to appreciate the structures and uh, <clears throat> big realization. We know we're in trouble if we have more than two openings in the alimentary canal. If there's an opening in the thorax or an opening in the abdomen or if there's an opening uh, into the leg um, we're in trouble. This is a system that is um, uh, inside the peritoneal cavity that is sterile. There's uh, bacteria uh, in the alimentary canal. It tends to be somewhat acidic, uh, lower pH. If that is introduced into either one of these cavities, then there's ongoing disease process. Um, that leads to uh, inflammation, infection, and necrosis. Uh, be way heads up about the definition of the acute abdomen. Here are some of the pathologies that lead to acute abdomen. They, these uh, conditions will tend to express themselves in a similar way uh, and then the differential diagnosis allows you to uh, ferret out which of these pathologies is going on. It's way important to realize, I think you picked up in the reading, that um, the brain of the bowel is the small intestine. There are as many neurons in the small intestines as there are in the spinal cord. And in fact, the small intestines will uh, function on their own without the nervous, uh, the central nervous system uh, being in play. And... Um, there are some psychogenic linkages um, between uh, emotional state and um, uh, psychological state uh, that lead to dysfunction and despair. People who have irritable bowel syndrome or um, um, conditions where they're not able to control their... Um, uh, their um, fecal discharge that are related to um, that which is beyond control of, of uh, the person who has the difficulty. Signs and symptoms of GI, certainly nausea, emesis, diarrhea, anorexia, and constipation. Not going to be here for a long period of time. This is a place in, um, you know, if you've done some international travel, for that matter, uh, Inter domestic travel, domestic travel, it could very well be that you experience traveler's diarrhea because of the different foods, the time change, um, uh, spices, whatever. And here's just kind of a fun compilation of things that indicate traveler's di diarrhea. And it's kind of funny to know what some of the um, uh, euphemisms are, I've been to India, and so Delhi Belly, and in the Far East, Hong Kong Dog, Hong Kong Dog, yeah. And then <clears throat> some of the indications, signs and symptoms of GI tract disease, dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, uh, achalasia is where there's a narrowing or a stenosis in the esophagus or somewhere in uh, the alimentary canal, this is because, achalasia is because the smooth muscle is staying uh, contracted. You could say uh, uh, in spasm and it causes a narrowing and it, <clears throat> people who have achalasia uh, get food uh, caught. The bolus that they're passing into their digestive system gets trapped here and it's a very disconcerting disease. It may require medication or surgical correction. Um, some of which are not, not way pleasant. And then uh, gastrointestinal bleeds will lead to the possibility of leading to hematemesis, which is, uh, emesis is throwing up. If there's blood in it, it's, it's pronounced hematemesis. Hematemesis is going to be bright red. Melina is, <clears throat> well, let's go to uh, hematochesia. This is... Um, defecating uh, and having blood uh, in the person's stool. Uh, now both hematemesis and uh, hematochesia are bright red. When blood is exposed to digestive enzymes, it turns dark. 
And so coffee grounds emesis would be a person who throws up material that's gotten into the stomach and digestive enzymes are breaking it down. It's coffee grounds emesis. That's what it looks like. And then a person who defecates very dark, tar-like and foul-smelling feces, that's called melina. That means that there's a bleed somewhere up the alimentary canal and the expression of that is through the anus as opposed to hematochesia. Um, the disease process could be hemorrhoid, uh, could be neoplastic, they're uh, defecating with bright lead bread blood. That means it's not up into the alimentary canal where there's big uh, digestive enzyme uh, pool. Uh, we talked in class about hiatal hernia. There's two different kinds, but this is what I want, to, want you to know, that the sliding hernia uh, results in actually the stomach moving through the diaphragm, this is the demarcation between thorax and abdomen, and the stomach actually moves into the thorax. These people are very, very uncomfortable with pressure sensation and killer heartburn. And so the lower esophageal sphincter has actually uh, slid up into the esophagus. If that stays like this, this tissue is not built for these digestive enzymes, and this can be irritative chronic inflammation and can lead to uh, esophageal cancer. And then GERD, gastric esophageal reflux disease. This is, this is where um, not a hiatal hernia, but because the lower esophageal sphincter is not closing all the way, then foodstuffs and the digestive process moves up into the esophagus. And this is your buddy or your grandma or, or whomever who complains of every time I lay down, uh, especially if it's uh, close to when I've eaten, I get really bad heartburn. And the appropriate care for this is to moderate your weight. Don't eat right before you're going to uh, recline or go to bed. Uh, and use um, pro uh, proton inhibitor medications like Prilosec or uh, Nexium. Uh, GERD. What I want you to know, or what we should know, is that the triggers for GERD include some of the foods that we like. Chocolate, peppermint, coffee, soft drinks, fatty and spicy foods. When we eat these foods, it's not a wonder that it causes GERD because it relaxes the lower esophageal sphincter and it opens and these the digestion continues up into the esophagus instead of moving toward the uh, uh, well the lower esophageal sphincter is not compartmentalizing like it should and um, so there are some there are some other uh, uh, things for you to pay attention to who's vulnerable to this that's listed for you here you're very aware that um, the uh, increased valsalva, interthecal pressure, can increase the impact of GERD. Okay, you, you ferret that out and, and study that. Now, in scleroderma, sclera means sclerotic, which means tightening. Derma means skin. Well, here's a, here's a person who has scleroderma of their hands. There's no doubt that their skin has become very tough and gone into contracture such that they're in flexion. That's their full extended position right here. Well, this same disease is not limited to just what we see, but one of the places where we're vulnerable for tissue change is in the alimentary canal, and it causes strictures or narrowing, uh, and uh, you can see that that can preclude getting food uh, down the alimentary canal. Uh, in class, I shared with you about the locality of the upper esophageal sphincter. This keeps us from vomiting. Uh, um, you've had circumstances where you, you, you were, boy, peristalsis was reversed and you're moving this direction. And you say, nope, not going to do it. And so you get this sphincter closed. Um, sometimes you don't want to close it. You're in an appropriate place and you're just going to heave your cookies, okay? The lower esophageal, is, uh, esophageal sphincter is what we've been talking about uh, relative to GERD. This has got to get closed off so that we don't do gastric digestion up in the esophagus. 
what relaxes that, what kind of maneuvers cause it to happen. Uh, when we were in the respiratory system, I talked to you about advocating your uh, patients who have respiratory difficulty, tendency toward aspiration of food into their lungs. In this particular case, GERD sufferers have them lay on their left side. This will be less dramatic, less pressure on the lower esophageal sphincter. Didn't say that to you in the class. Esophageal cancer is a tough one. Uh, not caught readily, and it can progress to um, metastatic cancer, and you can follow up on that. I'm actually going to hold esophageal varices until we go into the hepatic um, uh, system, which, which will be after uh, Easter recess. Um, this is where people have really high blood pressure in their liver, um, can have a backflow of deoxygenated blood and it causes um, varic varicose uh, pooling of blood. And we would know that this is going on by the person's reported lifestyle, their history, but also the fact that they're expressing blood in uh, their sputum. Um, and so it would be bright red blood and so that would be uh, hematemesis. And then in class, we use Play-Doh to demonstrate a peptic ulcer and the erosions that occur. Didn't hit this hard. This needs to be hit hard. What causes uh, ulcers in the alimentary canal? Uh, it could be stress, chronic stress. The acidity is low, uh, meaning the pH is low, and it causes erosions. Okay. But this bacteria known as H. pylori has been linked. It's the leading cause of peptic and duodenal ulcers. And so antibiotics will solve this ulcer thing. Um, there might be foods that set a person off. and, and yeah. um, If you would go to this PowerPoint, you'll be able to see an ulcer um, um, as they scope the person's uh, esophagus and then down into their uh, stomach, through the stomach into the duodenum, you'll be able to spot that very white um, hypoxic portion of the duodenum that is ulcerous. Cancer can occur in the stomach, not, not uh, happening a, a great deal, but when it happens it's uh, um, difficult. Uh, the pyloric stenosis, we dealt with this in class with a balloon uh, that had gastric juices in it. And, and um, so just be aware that a child could be born with this. This is a distraught mother who says, I can't keep any food down this baby. I give him a breast milk or a bottle and he begins to really, really fuss. I can tell he's so very hungry, but then he vomits this long under pressure long distance vomiting it's because there's not a clear passageway there's a stenotic valve and so it's just shooting right back up uh, um, out of the canal and then there are a number of uh, malabsorptive diseases I'm gonna let you consume this this is a highlight um, people who can not absorb certain kinds of minerals or vitamins or nutrients uh, maybe that they lack a coenzyme or a, a, um, an enzyme and uh, or or a vitamin. Vitamin uh, B12 is critical for the absorption of certain certain foodstuffs, and that gets that's difficult for an older person. They we tend to not uh, absorb B12, and it causes malabsorption, which means we don't have enough energy to live. We talked about botulism. You acted this out as a result of the botulism. Uh, bacteria uh, superior uh, to inferior. The real uh, end stage of this is paralysis of the respiratory system and um, that can lead to asphyxiation. Okay, take care.